All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Shang the Power. So I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today. The first story is kind of a funny story for you guys. So Antoine Vaillant recently did a guest posing. And the funny thing about this guest posing was that Antoine did the guest posing in men's physique board shorts. Now, this guest posing was at the Toronto Championships in Canada. And the full video is up on Antoine's channel if you want to go check it out. Now, Antoine has always been known for kind of having a pretty good sense of humor. And I thought this was a pretty interesting guest posing. Just considering the fact that Antoine weighs about 300 plus pounds in the off season and clearly does not have a men's physique physique. And then, you know, a little bit into the guest posing, he takes off the board shorts and starts doing regular poses. But I thought it was a pretty funny guest posing. I thought you guys might enjoy these clips here of Antoine trolling the men's physique division. And I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description to Antoine's channel and this video. Again, if you guys want to check it out, the full thing is over there on his channel. All right, so the next topic I want to cover for you guys is Rolly Winkler at the Arnold Classic Australia. Now, even though Rolly Winkler took third here and he was a little bit off, I really do think that Rolly deserves props here for what he's been able to do with his midsection. I think it's actually really amazing. So specifically during the pre-judging portion of the Arnold Classic Australia, Rolly Winkler hits a front double bicep, and then he does something which I think is extremely impressive. He damn near hits a vacuum pose with that front double bicep. And I think this is absolutely amazing to see this from Rolly Winkler. And I think as fans, if we're going to criticize bodybuilders that have guts, we really need to recognize when bodybuilders correct that problem. And in fact, overcorrect that problem to the point where not only does Rolly have a small waist, incredible abdominal control, but to hit a vacuum pose like this in the front double bicep is just absolutely impressive. Especially if you compare this to where Rolly used to be a couple years ago when everybody was talking about his midsection. People were giving him nicknames because his midsection was so bad. But it's just so fantastic here how small he's been able to get his waist. And I have a lot of respect for what he's been able to do. The fact that he's taken the criticism from the fans, from the judges, um, and actually acted on that. And it worked. I mean, he's got a fantastic midsection. And this is what I would like to see with Phil Heath. He's been kind of pushing back against the criticism that he's gotten on his midsection. But if we saw Phil do what Roly did here and get his waist to look like Roly's waist looks here, Phil Heath would be able to win the Olympia again. He would be unstoppable. If Phil does what roly has been able to do with his midsection, it'll be game over. I mean, Phil will continue to win the Olympia for years to come if he can make a transformation like Roly has. And I think the fact that Roly did it, he's shown these other guys that it can be done. So props to Roly Winkler. He looks fantastic here. Now, Roly Winkler wasn't the only men's open bodybuilder at the Arnold Classic Australia to hit a vacuum pose. Luke Sando was also hitting a vacuum pose here. And I believe he also hit it at the Arnold Classic Ohio. And I think it's fair to say that both Roly and Luke have been rewarded for what they've been able to do with their midsections and the, the aesthetics that they've been able to gain by hitting poses like this um, and getting that waist size down like that. So I think what we're starting to see is the shift that we've been talking about in bodybuilding that we've wanted to see for so long. The open guys are realizing, okay, we need to have small waist now. And the fact that guys like Roly Winkler are hitting vacuum poses, I think is incredible. And again, my hat goes off to these guys that are hitting vacuum poses and reducing the size of their waist on stage or simply increasing the control that they have over their midsection during the transitions and during the poses. Um, I think it's incredible. And I think these guys, you know, really deserve respect for what they've been able to do um, with their physiques, especially guys that carry as much muscle mass as Luke Sando and Rolly Winkler do. Um, I, I just think it's amazing and they really deserve credit here. So this vacuum discussion is a good segue into my next story here, and that is about Chris Bumstead, who took second place at the Classic Physique Olympia. He's been speaking out as well about the importance of the vacuum pose and how it makes a physique look more aesthetic and classic physique. Um, he posted a great video on his channel. I'm going to link that in the description box below um, where he talks about what his take is on should the vacuum pose be mandatory, is the vacuum pose important, and what makes a good classic physique in the classic physique division. I think it was a really, really good video, um, and he elaborated very well the way that he feels about classic physique. And he put up this post on his Instagram story of Bob Paris hitting a vacuum pose because one of the arguments against the vacuum pose was that some guys with a very classic physique didn't or couldn't hit a vacuum pose. And one of the names that was mentioned as a guy that didn't hit a vacuum pose was Bob Paris. So Chris posted this photo of Bob hitting a vacuum pose, making a very good point. He's a very aesthetic guy, but don't say he can't hit a vacuum pose because he can. And I think this ties in very well with the previous story, because if men's open bodybuilders like Rolly Winkler and Luke Sando can hit a vacuum pose, then what's the excuse for a guy in classic physique to not hit a vacuum pose? 
So I know the argument of should the vacuum post be mandatory is a very controversial one and a very debatable one, but I do think the vacuum post is something very important to the classic physique division, and I do think champions in that division should be able to hit one. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today is Larry Wheels. So Larry Wheels, probably one of the strongest men on the planet right now, and he's famous for his crazy powerlifting videos and lifting insane amount of weight in the gym. Uh, but recently, it looks like he can't find a weight heavy enough, so he started lifting people. In this video here, you can see him incline shoulder pressing uh, two dudes, one dude in each arm, which, I mean, dude, can Larry Wheels just get any more impressive? And I'm waiting for someone in the comment section to start critiquing his form um, while he's lifting two human beings, <laughs> one in each arm. There's going to be someone out there for sure that's going to start talking about how bad his form is. It's like, dude, he's lifting people. All right, so the next story that I had for you guys today, I wanted to make a correction here. In my video yesterday, I was talking about Big Rami getting a new supplement sponsorship by Dragon Pharma Labs, and I actually pulled up the wrong website when I was doing that video. So there are two Dragon Pharma websites, and the website I pulled up was not the one that is sponsoring Big Rami. So I wanted to take that video down and redo it and make sure I showed you guys the right company that was sponsoring Big Rami. So the correct website is dragonpharmalabs.com, not dragonpharma.com. So Dragon Pharma Labs, which sponsors Big Rami, is a regular supplement company. In my video yesterday, when I looked up dragonpharma.com, this was a completely different company um, that was selling some you know, borderline illegal stuff. So I didn't want to make any confusion about which company Big Rami was sponsored by. So I wanted to clarify that in this video. Um, so I took the old video down to make sure I gave you guys the correct information here. So Big Rami is sponsored by Dragon Pharma Lab, so I guess that means he's no longer with GAT. So this was announced a few days ago on an Instagram, uh, Xavier.Solano, where he says in the post, the newest addition to the Dragon Pharma team is Big Rami. So this is a big deal for this supplement company that's just starting out here um, to have a major athlete like Big Rami on their team. So I just wanted to make sure I clarified that because when you search Dragon Pharma, the main thing that comes up is this other website. It's usually the first result. Um, and it's, it's not what is going on at Dragon Pharma Labs. So just wanted to clarify that for you guys. Honest mistake. So the next story that I have for you guys today is Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Arnold Schwarzenegger has done a pretty good job of being heavily involved on social media. Um, for a guy that's not a millennial, he's done a very good job with his team, I guess. Being very active on things like Instagram and Snapchat. In fact, Snapchat even sponsored the Arnold Classic. So the actual Snapchat crew was there. Um, putting Arnold Classic stories on the Snapchat, you know, main page. So Arnold is very in touch with the social media world, but recently Arnold put up a post on his Instagram announcing that he now has a TikTok account. So you guys might be familiar with TikTok through PewDiePie videos or through just seeing a bunch of 14 and 15 year olds post, you know, these little voiceover music videos that they do on TikTok. But now Arnold has his own TikTok account and his username on there is at a schnitzel. So I never had any interest in TikTok or ever downloading the app, but now I'm kind of curious to see what kind of things Arnold would be posting over there. So it might be something that I have to check out. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today is Dexter Jackson. So Dexter Jackson is an absolutely legendary bodybuilder, uh, but he recently put up a post on his Instagram announcing that he might be retiring in 2019 after the Olympia. So he is doing the 2019 Olympia, but he did say in this video, it's a possibility that he might be done in 2019. So let me roll that clip for you guys right here. So um, after Tampa Pro, then we gonna go to the Olympia, of course, and we'll see what's happening after that. But I hear I, I don't even know if I'm gonna be around. I may retire at the Olympia or after the Olympia or so it's kind of a bittersweet moment to see Dexter Jackson talking about retirement because Dexter Jackson is 49 years old, which it makes him one of the oldest competitive pro bodybuilders around that is still successful. And he is one of the winningest pro bodybuilders of all time. Actually, he is the winningest bodybuilder of all time. He has won more titles in pro bodybuilding than any other bodybuilder, um, specifically the Arnold Classic. He's won more Arnold Classic titles than any other bodybuilder. Now, he sat out the Arnold Classic this year, and he was outside of the top six at the Olympia in 2018. So that could be the reason why Dexter Jackson is considering retiring because he hasn't been out of the top six in the Olympia since I think like 2002. So that's how long Dexter's been around and been on top of the game in bodybuilding. 
So it's kind of sad to see him retiring, but also I think it's kind of good because I think he can go out on a high note. I still think he can have a pretty high placing at the 2019 Olympia, and he's not going to stick around too long like some bodybuilders do. Um, and people, you know, generally remember bodybuilders for their most recent appearance or their final appearance. If they stick around too long and they don't look good and they place badly at their final shows, people remember that. So I think if Dexter gets a really good placing at his last Olympia, I think that'd be a good point for him to retire and go out on a high note with his career. Um, but Dexter Jackson is a legend in the sport of bodybuilding. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.